الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلماتك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي قصر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عدد خلقك ورضا نفسك وزنة عرشك ومداد كلماتك Alhamdulillah wa shukla wa thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing us to gather here for his remembrance, for the remembrance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Every week inshallah we utilize this short period of time as a moment in which we remind ourselves, myself first, and for those that inshallah listen, for those that give their time, for those that um, make time to listen inshallah and so we pray and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our intention sincere our <coughs> sitting here for his sake alone and inshallah for what has been said for it to affect our hearts so that we may make amal upon it one of the things about ilm about knowledge is that knowledge is readily available ever more so than in this time there's never been an era where knowledge has been so accessible other than the time that we are living in. Any book that you want, any text that you want, any quote that you want, any ayah of the Qur'an where you simply know two words of that ayah and you are looking for it and you did not know the Qur'an or the Qur'an was not next to you, you just put those few words into the, into the internet and you ask Shaykh Google, he will tell you everything that you want to know. All the ilm, all knowledge is readily available at our fingertips. But this is the era, the era that we are living in, in which ilm is so much and amal is so little. There is so much knowledge, but in comparison, the action is very minute. 99% knowledge available, 1% action. Whereas if you look in the, in the times of our pious predecessors, our forefathers, as far as even our grandfathers in the early 1900s, Look at their lives for those elders that we saw. How much did they know? They knew very little. They knew the 1%. And the amal is 99%. So ilm without the amal is fruitless. Knowing everything and not doing the action is a waste of time. So it is important and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the knowledge we acquire because this is one of the questions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us on Yawm al-Qiyamah about our knowledge. What knowledge did you acquire and how did you utilize that knowledge? So may Allah save us from this grave, grave punishment that we could face if our amal does not fall into place, inshallah. Inshallah, today there was, um, I wanted to read a nasiha from Imam al-Ghazali where he talks about muhasaba, evaluation. <coughs> he radiallahu said, He who does not work shall have no reward. It is reported that a man of many Israel worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 70 years. Allah intended to test him before the angels. So he subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him an angel to tell him that he did not merit paradise even with this worship. When the angel informed him of this worshipper, replied, We are created for worship and we can only worship him. The angel returned to Allah saying, Oh my Allah, you know best what he said. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, since he did not turn away from worshipping us, then with our grace, with our fadl, we shall not turn him away from us. O oh my angels, bear witness that I have forgiven him. Nice, succinct, to the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ insa إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not sent jinn or I have not created jinn and man except that they worship me. And this is a classical example where the people of Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to show the angels and every now and again Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show to his makhluk about people who are living on this earth in this way. And this person who worshipped 70 years and at the end of it, towards the end of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel to say, your ibadat is not accepted. So what would we do if we were put in that situation? Okay, lose hope, become helpless, feel lost out, feel shortchanged. This is all the normal responses that we would throw out. And this is where shaitan uses that time to instill more hatred and play on our desires and play on the weaknesses of our being. That you wasted your time. All this you did for who? What did you get back from it? See, I told you. You should have slept. You should have eaten more. You should have done everything more. What was the point? But the man said that I did what I was told to do. And one of the guidances that we are given is that walk according to what the sharia and the sunnah is, but not according to how you are feeling. So outwardly, if you are performing the actions, inwardly you know that you are doing it for the sake of Allah, but you still feel detached, you still feel a void, you still feel away, you think that something is not right. Go for what you are doing on the outwardly that is in line with the sharia and the sunnah, as opposed to what is in the feeling. And this is where this man is saying that we can only but worship Allah. There is nothing else to have done. There was no one else that was available to do the ibadah. So this is where we need to think about it and make that evaluation for ourselves that our purpose, our purpose of creation was to come and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah created us and then he put us in the lowest of the low position. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. Verily all of mankind is in loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then, everyone is in loss except those that have believed. Except those that have believed. And this is where we need to understand that part of our belief is to understand what Allah has sent us here for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us but we have our own interpretation as to what we need to do, how we need to go about it. And this needs to change. The mindset needs to change. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Evaluate your works before you are asked to account for them. Weigh your works before you are evaluated. Sallallahu alayhi wa Evaluate your works. Do a muhasiba, do a hisab of what you are doing, what you are saying. And subhanallah, the methodology that we have in front of us allows us to Understand how did we use our tongue? How did we use our eyes? How did we use our ears? How did we use our hands, our feet, our stomach, our private? How did we? Everything. It, is, it was a custom, it was a sunnah, it was a, uh, a tradition of the pious predecessors that every night before they slept, they would go through their day. They would go through their day, ticking off the events that happened in the day the interactions that happened in the day, the people that they met in the day, and they would say, did I do this person right or did I do this person wrong? And if anyone had wronged you in the day, it is up to you now to be the better person and say, oh Allah, I forgive him. I forgive this person and I do not want that anyone be punished on my account. And if you have wronged someone, then it is for you to either sort that relationship out with them in person or if that interaction was never going to happen again, then at least pray for them, make dua for them. Read some ikhlas, 
It is said that if you read Surah Ikhlas three times, you get the reward of reading a Quran. Because one time Surah Ikhlas, the reward is equal to one third of the Quran. If you read Surah Ikhlas ten times, the Prophet ﷺ said that a palace in Jannah is built for that person. So imagine you gift someone a palace in this life, in this dunya, how happy would a person be? But not, not just this dunya, because this dunya is temporal. This dunya has to end. But you say to them that, oh my brother, I wronged you today, but for this, please forgive me, and I, I ask Allah to grant you a palace in Jannah, where you will abide in forever. How beautiful a gift. This is the way to make amends. This is your muhasaba. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand these small things which have a massive effect on our lives in this life and in the hereafter. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, those who think that they can achieve their aims without work are dreaming. Okay, so now this person wants to build or he wants to have an empire, he wants to drive big cars, he wants to travel the world, but he doesn't work. So what are these people doing? They're daydreaming. They're wasting time. They're sitting in the laps of shaitan. Shaitan is giving them all these imaginations and they think, yeah, yeah, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. But it never happens. And those who think they will attain the goals through exertion alone are overconfident and consider themselves self-sufficient. So there's two extremes Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala said. That one is not to work and expect everything to fall in your lap. The second one is to say that I am going to work 